Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker, and I grew up watching both As the World Turns and Guiding Light. While I was stuck home in quarantine, I realized that I was missing my Springfield family and thought some of you may be feeling the same way, too. You have all been asking to see my next, next guest all together here in the locker room, and I'm so excited that they said yes and are joining me today. Please welcome to the locker room the Simon family, Courtney, Peter, and their daughter, Kate Hall. Peter and Courtney, welcome. Kate, Hi. thank Hi, you, everybody. Thanks Hello. for being here. Oh, thanks thank for having you. us. Yeah. Every I know fans are very excited. I, I mean, they've been following you, Peter and Courtney, since Search for Tomorrow, <laughs> a long time ago. Just a, just a few years ago, just a couple. Yeah. <laughs> just a couple. Can do you remember me? Is that where you both first met? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I remember. Um, well, I was on Guiding Light in a you know very minor role, but um, I I had like a year to go on my contract. I was playing a nurse, and uh, who actually had a big crush on Ed Bauer. Ironically, oh, oh, but, but not not I, Peter Simon Ed Bauer. Not Peter no. Simon. That was, that was, that was more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um and the producer called me in one day and he said I have good news and bad news, and um the good news is or the bad news is um we're letting you go, and I burst into tears before he could even get to the good news. <laughs> and, and he said, no, 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 really, it's it's not bad. He said, you know, the, the writers are, are doing some, you know, they're filling in for some writers who are on vacation on another show, Search for Tomorrow. And they, they need somebody to come on Search for Tomorrow to be the love interest for a character named Scott Phillips. And um, you're, you're going to, you're going to play the part. They don't, you know, they don't need you to audition. They've been watching you on Guiding Light and, and uh, you start Monday. And this was, I believe, like Thursday or something. Wow. Thought, yeah. well, this, <laughs> so wow. Yeah, this <laughs> is great, you know, but I was still very sad because I felt very, you know, close to my guiding light family. Um, but so I, I ran home and and watched Search for Tomorrow so that I could see this person that I was going to be involved with. And he was doing a scene with Chris Lowe, who played Eric, uh, our our son, my oh. stepson. And um, he was just so warm and natural and appealing with this kid. This I, is Chris Lowe you're talking about. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were not more no, more natural no, or no, but no, for no. some reason I thought I'm in trouble. Yeah. So were you replacing somebody at search? No. It was a it was a, a new, new character, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they, they hadn't cast that person until no, isn't that odd? I mean, really wow. it like it wasn't uh, it wasn't three days, it was more like a week, but it was literally just, you know, I left one and to the other. You just gave me a great question because I'm doing a, a show tomorrow with Rob DeSena and Mary Clay Bol Boland, casting oh, directors. Wow. Uh, so that's a great question because, like, what do you do when you're in a time crunch like that? Yeah. You know? Wow. 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 Mine, wow. Mine was actually the opposite when uh, they called me very hush hush about going on to Guiding Light because, as I remember, it was. It was almost in the spring where they said, we'd like you not to take any roles now. Um, they wouldn't tell me what the what the part was, <laughs> but they sort of oh. said, don't take any other work until the fall. I mean, it was a, it was a long, a long time to wow. not know what I was doing. And I sort of felt, well, why am I committing myself not to work when, you know, there's no signed contract here or anything? Of course, no one offered me any work. So. I was just going to say, I hope they paid you. Um, I don't remember. Did Mark just decide to leave? I mean, if they knew. I, I, I don't know the ins and outs. I know they, it, it, it must have been an issue right up to the end because it, it got so that they hadn't even told me what my first day was, hadn't sent me any scripts. And we were like a week before I was supposedly to go on wow. and I found out 
from uh, Bobby Anton, right? The, the, the costume, costume designer. Costume designer told me. So I sort of came in, you know, with a, a slight grudge. And I think the cast, it was, it was one of those cases where they thought that a uh, new head writer was trying to make people look younger or something. And then someone else said, yeah, but part of the reason is that they, the writer thought that Mark was freelancing a bit, was, was not saying the dialogue as written. <laughs> I thought, wow. <laughs> they come to the wrong person to, uh, <laughs> to replace <no>. him. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's so funny. Kate, when did you realize, you know, mom and dad were on television and. Oh, know. I think pretty early. Right. I mean, when I was little, mom was doing commercials. Yeah. Mom. That's mm -hmm. yeah. And dad was always on something and I loved, I watched whatever mom was writing and I watched whatever dad was acting on. And he was so funny, you know, it'd be like three 30 and I'm watching guiding light and he would come into the living room. And if he saw that that was on or that he was on specifically, he was like about face and he left and <laughs> this man has like never watched anything he's ever done. I don't think oh, yeah, I really check it out. You're really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I loved it. Are, 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 I loved are, you, are it. you an actor who doesn't watch what you do, Peter? Um, yeah, and I'm, I, I don't necessarily recommend that because I think you can learn a lot by looking at what you do. But I've, I've always been really super uncomfortable doing it. So I, I, I don't. I just look and, and basically cringe <laughs> when, I, when I can't avoid it so, or couldn't avoid it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the present and this is stuff mm -hmm. way in the past. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. What, um, what do you remember about your search days working together? Oh, it was, well, yeah, you, know, you start. <laughs> Mm. Well, it was it was wonderful, and as Courtney said earlier, it was it was uh, frightening because if you're falling in love with someone you're working with, it raises all sorts of issues. And we were both married at the time, so it, it was a it was sort of a and it, it back then it was what treated a little bit as a, as a scandal oh, by the yeah. magazines and stuff. Yeah. And so we stopped giving interviews and they would say, if you don't talk to us, we're going to make up stories and everything. And it was, it was tumultuous, tumultuous time. It was, it was very strange, but working with Courtney was obviously wonderful, wonderful. That's just aside from falling in love. With her, so. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe the magazines were that way back then. Oh, I well, yeah. you know, they, many, it surprised me because um, I, I felt like the, the daytime magazines were not, you know, they didn't deal in a lot of scandal. In fact, they, mm -hmm. you know, partly because of who our sponsors were and just how the shows were structured and who they, you know, wanted to appeal to. They wanted us all to seem, you know, very normal and relatable and, you know, not you know, not overly glamorous or, uh, you know, different from uh, the lives that the viewers were having. So, um, but but for some reason, this, uh, this attracted a few yeah. sort of renegade uh, <clears throat> daytime journalists who sort of, you know, tracked us down and called us at home. And, and um, yeah, it was, it was a little scary, but... Um, it was over quickly. Well, yeah, let's, I mean, let's all, it, it was small, it was not a mob scene. I mean, people no. were not hanging out in front of Right, them. but it, but <laughs> just even back then, it's surprising a little. Mm. Kate, Kate, were you hooked, were you hooked at a young age? What'd you say, Courtney? Uh, you were just saying, what was it like being on, on Search for Tomorrow? Yeah. Aside from our relationship, it was one of the best companies oh, absolutely. I have ever worked with. And I think Peter feels the same. Absolutely. You don't know at the time, it's your first job in television and you think, well, gee, this is a lot of fun. And aren't these people really talented? And aren't there some fabulous role models here like Mary Stewart and Larry Haynes and you know others. And um, now that we've worked elsewhere, we know that we got, you know, incredibly lucky right 
out of the box. Mm. It was just a, a, a perfect place to be. Yeah. Speaking of the two you just mentioned, Larry and Mary, what would you say you learned from those two? Well, <laughs> all right. The clean, I the had... clean stuff. The clean stuff. <laughs> Larry, I worked. I actually, I worked more with Larry than I worked with Mary. And one scene comes to mind where he was sitting uh, in a hospital waiting room, and I was supposed to come in from an elevator, walk down a hall, go in a door and ask him, how is somebody? I was all upset, all nervous. I believe nervous. it was your mother. My mother, all right. <laughs> so also, how is my mother? And his line was, Eunice is holding her own. And this was back in the day when they didn't do take after take. You know, you were supposed to, we, we did search as if it were live. So it got to the point where I would come in, say this to Larry, who it was absolutely impossible. You could not break this man up. He made everyone laugh. You could never make him laugh. He was a trained, wonderful, superb comedian, right? And he, he went, people really tried. I got in and he would say, Eunice is holding his own and I would start to laugh. And they would say, you know, your mother has just died. Please get serious. I'd go out there and try it. And it finally got to when the elevators, those little wooden things that, you mm -hmm. know, open like that, mm -hmm. just thinking about going in, and this is like on take seven, thinking about going into the room and asking the question, I would start to laugh in the elevator. <laughs> so they just had to cut me out of the scene. I mean, I was, I was not in the scene. Larry was such a joy, such a wonderful, and it was a great connection he had. He was working a lot on Broadway at the time. The show got out at three. I mean, it would take or did we start at three? Do you no, remember? We, we, we got in at like, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we were usually, taping was over at two. Oh, really? Wow. Two? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so a lot of people were working elsewhere, and that was a wonderful feeling to be not just isolated doing a soap, but working with a lot of people in the New York stage community and Larry was primo that way and Mary was oh, okay. oh you you talk about oh, Mary okay. she was great so well but I mean and Mary was you know just so real so never forced so never hammy so just I mean she just had a fabulous grounding to her and she would you know she'd occasionally give you some advice she once said to me <laughs> Um, she said, you know, you're, uh, if you would work just a little harder at like lowering your voice, it would be, you know, <laughs> easier for people to take you seriously as an attorney. Say. And cause, cause at the time I, you know, I had kind of a youthful reality yeah. to my voice. <laughs> and, mm. um, I did do that. And I did, I did find that it was, you know, a, that it was a very sort of, more weight. Um, but, uh, oh, Mary had her foibles. Also, you know, she 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 would write her lines. Uh, and if you look down, it would say, "I told you never to say that to me." <laughs> and, and no one had erased it from, you know, the time before. And just very, you know, so there were little gifts all over the room where she would just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Kate, did you ever watch Mom and Dad on Search? Did you ever go down the no. YouTube, no. The YouTube yeah. rabbit hole? Are they up on? I've looked, but I've never been successful at finding anything. So send well, it my way. P and G had, oh, no. you know, they were saving. First of all, they weren't taping anything. No. Then when they started to tape things, they saved them for a bit, and then um, there was a there was a like a fire or something where a bunch of this stuff was was actually destroyed. 
So oh, wow. um, at one of the warehouses, maybe. He said, "Burn those tapes." <laughs> <laughs> wow, in, in one of those um, warehouses, maybe. Peter, one of the fans wrote was asking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was asking about Morgan Fairchild and the infamous oh. in the infamous scene where she fell through the glass table. Do you remember that? Yes, it wasn't. It was it a glass table. It was, was a, it a sliding a glass sliding door, door or a yeah. plate oh, glass window. Yeah, gotcha. and that's weird. I mean, you never really trust that that stuff is is going to break. You know, it just looks so real. So when you have to go have to go through it, it the whole idea is kind of is is kind of spooky. I actually saw Morgan talking about this recently. Um, somebody, you know, on Cameo maybe asked her okay. a question about this, and she obviously remembers that day with mm -hmm. crystal clarity mm -hmm. because it was very unusual for a soap to spend any money of that nature, and that that's uh, sugar glass, which it really is made out of sugar. Uh -huh. Um, is very expensive. And um, so to do a, a big stunt like this, and of course they had to hire a stunt person to do the actual fall through, um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was big news, yeah. And, and, uh, and it worked really well and they, they used it a lot. They played it again. <laughs> <laughs> and again and again, they, they repeated it. Um, Peter, what do you remember about working with her? What was she like? Um, <clears throat> oh, she was wonderful. I mean, she was, she was so much fun. She was very, very simple and told a lot of stories about growing up in, in Texas and stuff like that. And, you know, there was no, she, this is pre Morgan fame time. She was just right. another fun, mm -hmm. fun actress. And, uh, it was, it was great, but most of that time was when Courtney was off having her first child. So I, I was sort of missing Courtney. I was saying, can you come back? But Morgan was, was great. And, and the, the deal then was you got to know people so much better because when you were taping a show as if it were live, you did it in order, you stopped and they, they, did the commercials shot not didn't shoot the commercials mm -hmm. but aired the commercials in it so the actors the whole company it was a half hour show then not an hour we all sat in a small really small tiny green room room waiting to go out so there was much more waiting to go out on the floor to tape there was much more camaraderie then so everyone mm -hmm. e even the people who weren't in the storyline with morgan got to to be with her, know with her, laugh with her. It was, you got, you got so much closer on, on the half hour shows than you did on the hour shows and that format of working. Gotcha. Yeah, to do hey, it did order, you get Say it again. I was just saying, when you do it in order, it's like doing a play. So the, the whole company is involved in that day's uh, yeah. work. Whereas now, you know, they, they divide it up into whoever's w working on a certain set, you know, and then, and so sometimes yeah. you see other people who are doing other stories because they're just, you yeah. know, you, you pass, you know, like ships in the night in the hallway on your way to the studio. But this was like, what was like being back, you, you waited backstage, you came out, you did your thing, you went back. It was very Kate, do they shoot General Hospital um, more than one day at a time? I mean, if they have a whole oh, bunch yeah. of things in one set, do they shoot those all together? I don't know. I'm never there. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm pretty. They, they break it up, Peter, like they started to do a getting live, like everybody in a set. And they yeah. do. They do. I, I mean, I, I mean, let's say Guiding Light was doing six shows near the end in in a day or something. They're mm -hmm. doing even more, I think, today, some of these shows to save yeah. money. Yeah. They're really cramming it in to, to you know, right. to save that dollar. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. I'm sure. Kate, um, did you get hooked on Guiding Light by watching? I did, yeah, I loved it. I watched it religiously, yeah. 
I wow. mean, not so much. I mean, I definitely watched it more when my dad was on, but um, uh -huh. I still kept up with it always, right up to the very end. Yeah, I, there were some times that I missed, but overall, I feel like I watched most, most of it. Yeah. It's so one of one of I our fans. World who, turns too. You watched what? Oh, World Turns too. When mom was uh, writing and working when, on when it. Dr. Lynn Michaels was on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'll get to uh, Dr. Michaels because I do have questions. But uh, one of our fans, Louisa, was asking, which I thought was a great question for both you and your mom. Um, what? Um, how is your dad different from Ed? How is Peter? How is he like him? And how oh. is he different from oh, Ed? Lord. <laughs> oh gosh! I mean, I think he's very different. I remember though, I would get you know. Like, Dad, you called Michelle like the nickname that you call me, you know, because he would, yeah. you know, he's such a loving and affectionate father. And that would come out when he would have scenes with his kids. And I'm like, can you come up with a different nickname for her? Because now it's not special anymore. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, they're, they're very, That's great. very different. But as a father, like those scenes would always get me. I would just, you know, there are so many that I can remember where I just, you know, because it's like, your dad is so good with you, and then you see him doing it on TV. It was just, it was special. It was very cool. You taught me how to be good with kids because mm -hmm. I love those <laughs> my favorite things. Well, absolutely, working with Michelle and stuff. Well, you could tell, yeah. But in terms of differences, uh, yeah, I mean, Peter is, you know, he's very irreverent and really, really funny, and. You know, whenever there was an, a, you know, a tiny opportunity to do that as Ed, he took it. But there were not a lot of. Yeah, but there were there were differences. I mean, Ed got sort of almost portly and fat, and I never did. And Ed, <laughs> Ed, Ed did so you got the missing the big right. differences. All, here. All, all the padding that you had to wear in the, in right. the yeah the, the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of um, the the kids, um, Peter, you worked with Rachel. You worked with Nancy. Did you work with Joy and um, oh my God, I'm Rebecca Budding? Oh yes, I did work with Rebecca Budding. But if there was somebody called Joy, no, I didn't. Okay, Joy. Joy there was, was uh, came after Rebecca before Nancy. Oh no, yeah. then. I, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't there then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was what do you remember about working with Rachel? Oh, Rachel, she she really tugged at my heart because that that was when they were the, the story at that point was being written by. Oh, now I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Okay, mm -hmm. by by the let's say the writers that I really liked mm -hmm. were, were writing the okay, show. Yeah, that's fine. Realistic way. I don't know. Don't want to get anyone angry. And <laughs> she was also younger then, and I mean the character was younger, so it was more of a how do how do I put this? That w when they decided, okay, we want to change the character of Michelle to do what soaps do. It's not just making her older, but we want to turn her into sort of a a sexy vamp or something like mm -hmm. that. And they decide, okay, well, Rachel is not the actress we want to play this character. It's like starting completely over, different. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Rebecca, but it was, she's completely different from Rachel. She brings out a whole, I mean, then her, her job was to, they had some dress up ball or something. And I was supposed to be like, George Washington mm -hmm. and she was uh I don't know some rocker or something mm -hmm. like that. I mean her her job was to shock me and my job was to be shocked. Mm -hmm. Where with Rachel it was a whole different uh and <laughs> and then I love the fact that P and G saying no no Rachel Minor she she couldn't she couldn't play this new sex mm -hmm. thing we're after. The very next job she got was playing a hooker down at the <laughs> <laughs> the new <laughs> festival. So obviously, mm -hmm. other people thought she was an actress and could do that. It but, had brains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, isn't it? It's always the way. You know oh, that yeah. that that's how 
how that happened. So Courtney, Dr. Michaels, you, you got to treat quite a few. Uh, Bill Fickner? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Did, did you? Did you also, uh, Julianne Moore? Yes. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And I was trying to remember who else. They, I mean, I know you so many. Who Who else did she treat? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, Roger Howarth, I, I guess. Um, Paul Ryan, when he was playing Paul Ryan. Mm-hmm. But, but that was a sort of an emergency situation where I said, you know, come in and jab somebody with a hypo. <laughs> <laughs> Carted off to the to the bin, um, uh, but long term, long, uh, there there was a character named Angel who had been abused by oh, her. Oh yeah, yeah. Seth, and Seth's girl. Uh, she became Seth's wife. Seth Snyder's wife. Oh right. Okay. Heather, um, I, and, I can't think of her last name. Angel. Uh, who who was the yeah, other one you just said? Alice is the actress who played yeah. Angel. Yeah. yeah, and she was she was terrific. Um, Did you cure anybody? <laughs> <laughs> well, what fun would that have been? I was just gonna say this is soap operas, right? <laughs> and then I treated Lucinda. Ah, yeah, what? and she, and it's so interesting because she would come in to the office, and you know, Lucinda would want to be in control. So God forbid the therapist is asking the question. She would suddenly, you know, throw in questions for me. And at one point (laughs) she crossed behind me and started touching the drapes and said, like, who decorates this place? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Liz Hubbard for you. You never knew what what she I don't know why I have this visual of like the Sopranos with uh, James Gandolfini and you know, they're, you know, you and Lucinda in the same kind of <laughs> dynamic. That's, yeah. that's great. That's no, it was, uh, yeah, she was, a, she was a very, um, very interesting patient. Yeah, who didn't want to be a what, patient. But. What, what, what was she being treated for back then? I was afraid you were going to ask me that. I don't remember either. One of the fans will tell us. One of the fans will. <laughs> Will tell us that's, good. that's no, thanks. I, I'd appreciate some help there. <laughs> yeah, so, somebody will tell me that in a second. Um, Kate, when did you know, or or not? When did you know you wanted to write? Did was what did you want when you were you know younger? Did was writing something you always? <laughs> no, I had no idea what I was. I mean, I left college just. I went into advertising. I went to sports marketing. I. Did a little, then I started thinking, okay, none of this is fitting and I've always loved to write. And so then I started working for like a diet and nutrition website, writing content when I I had no business doing that whatsoever. (laughs) Um, I hated that job. That was one of those jobs where you like just walk in with nervous stomach every day and you're just like, I don't want to be here. And then finally I went to mom and I said, you know, show me you do like could I maybe learn how to write for soaps and um you tell this part mom how did you react to that <laughs> well, I, I you know I I knew that Kate was bright and I knew that she could that she could write but you know even people who um are playwrights and and think to themselves well maybe I'll pick up a little extra cash and you know write soap opera for a while uh, to, are not necessarily suited for it. It's a very specific kind of writing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, not, it doesn't just come naturally to everyone. So my my fear when Kate asked me this was, what if she's not good at it? And I have to tell her that. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to to try and prop her up and then, you know, throw her out there to the wolves and have people say, you know, who told you you could do this? But um, I luckily did not have to do that yeah. because um, do you remember the first, I, I gave her a breakdown and I I, po- I had her write one scene. Yeah. And, and it I, was, oh, I should remember this. It was like Lucy and. Hmm. Aaron. So I yeah, think, something know. like that. Or Lucy and who, like Katie McLean was playing what? Ro- Rosanna. Rosanna. Something like that. And 
Um, yeah, so she, we started out scene and I would write it and turn it in and she was like, okay, this is okay. And then we just built it up little by little. Meanwhile, she is working full time as the editor. I don't know how she was giving me these assignments on that. Now that I know what goes into it, I can't imagine taking that time out. Um, but she always did. And then finally, she was like, okay, I think you can do this. And so we got, or I got an agent and that was really through Franny Newman. She said, I'm sure my agent would love to work with you. And so I met him and then it was a while. It took years and I was answering phones down in Chelsea while I was waiting for my big break. And the break really came through Malie Taggart who was doing the ABC writer development program. Yeah, And I had not known about it in time to submit anything and become a part of it. But she, God bless her, was like, I need a writer's assistant, like somebody to help me with all the assignments and you can do the assignments and turn them in. Like I will tell ABC that this is just sort of an extra freebie type thing. So that's how I sort of got my work um, into the you know hands of the people at ABC, and then I got offered a couple. Were you, were you, were you a writing assistant for a, a show, or no, just helping? Just, I mean, nope. it was it was a made up position. She just said, "I need an assistant," and I said, "I will do that." And um, That's and then awesome. after that, so so people at ABC read my stuff, and then I got a sample script at um, all my children. And I wrote a sample also for GH, but then the current writing assistant there, Tracy Thompson, she took the, they moved her up the ladder instead of bringing somebody new in. And then I eventually, but that's how I was sort of introduced to Bob Guza through my mother as well. And then that's how I got a job. He was like, no, I don't have an on staff position, but I am creating the show, The Night Shift. And I would love for you to write an episode of that. So that was the first thing I did. And then not long after that, I got the gig at All My Children. And then wow. not long after that, we went on strike. <laughs> and, and when did, when did you um, finally understand how hard your mom was working? Oh, pretty much right away, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're like, wait, I have to do this again? Like I just turned this in and already I have an assignment waiting for me. It's, you know, my husband likes to call it the never ending term paper, you just. Oh God, I it out, that. but <laughs> I I love it. I really do adore it. It's so much fun. And, and Peter, you write, but you you don't write for you've never written for daytime, right? No, and and unlike Courtney and Kate, I don't write successfully. So <laughs> I've I've always, I've always wanted to write plays. That's what I started out in sort of showbiz wanting to do. And every time I would get a little frustrated on a, on a soap, I would say, you know, I'm going to leave and write a play or try to act in, in, on stage and stuff, and it wouldn't work out. So I would go back to the soap if they would have me. And uh, I write enough to know that both Kate and Courtney are really super at it. I mean, really, really extraordinarily good. So that's all I need to know. Thank you, Beth. And Courtney, did you did you write for Peter at Search and Oh, sorry, Peter. What'd you say? I just want to say I I I really wish I had ever gotten to do any of Kate's scripts because they just look like so much fun. But mm -hmm. it, it it would have been a little it would have been nervous making because when you get a really good script, it's a whole different deal from getting the normal script where you feel free to you know sort of move around in it and change this and that. When you get a good script, you know that you have to do it pretty much as writ, and that's a whole different way of memorizing, of learning, of it, it gets more tense. But mm -hmm. and doing it justice. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. C Courtney, um, Lucinda was unearthing her childhood, <laughs> her Mary Ellen Walters childhood. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Like, right. Was it a split personality? Or I can't remember, or something like like that i i, I just think i i remember it a, slightly but i i can't fully yeah i don't think it was a full-blown split personality thing uh, uh i my recollection is that you know she sort of grew up in, in this kind of hard scrabble way and then completely reinvented herself and to you know to get back in touch with that needy 
Um, and I think she played that she played that character too in flashbacks that Mary Ellen Walters. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoever that whoever that was. <laughs> so Peter, you had two. I mean, you had a few daughters, and you had two Maureens, Ellen Dolan, who then went to World Turn. Yeah. And Ellen Parker. Right. Oh, that's so weird. Ellen Dolan and Ellen Parker. I just, <laughs> 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 it just just dawned on me. What what were the, what the you know what was each of them like or the differences you know? Uh, there again, it was it was more in the way that they were written in the time. I mean, Ellen Dolan started out when they were doing the whole family routine, right? Living in a yeah the, know, the, the, board, the, the boarding house, noisy, the boarding yeah house, boarding house, and it was family. it was more. Uh, rowdy, yeah, sort of lower class. It was earthy, and then when they decided to change, um, the the Ellen Parker version, the way they wrote that, was more of a of an upscale, intelligent, assertive, strong woman. And they traded some of the rowdy boarding house for that. I mean, it was it was really almost like two different characters. So yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to mm. hard to compare the two or to know why they why they changed. But I mean, to a certain extent, and I'm sure Courtney and Kate will will back this up. You know, if you see a different character playing a, a role, you get a sense of that pretty soon, and you start sort of writing for that character for that mm -hmm. actress or yeah. actor act yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um what do you remember you know what when learning that they were going to kill the character of maureen and and having to pl play that i i watched all of that just recently and just all of you rachel you ellen i mean talk about just talk about writing and mm -hmm. performing like that's yeah. like it's like a master class in all of it. The acting Ellen, Ellen was really marvelous in that. That was really something. Um, what did I think? Well, there were a lot of things going through my head. I mean, I I was obviously thinking, why exactly are you doing this? And if you are doing this, then you've got to be prepared to follow through with it. And then, I mean, after you kill off Maureen and then do you know how to, to successfully follow through with it? And then I wished during the playing of it, which you can't know until, you know, you get into it that they had given, you know, if you, if you set up the, the crime supposedly that breaks the couple up and then the wife goes and dies because she's so upset after one screaming fight in a car crash. It would be nice, and this is totally selfish, the way actors look at stories, you know, yeah, but what about me? What is, what is my angle in this? If they had justified more of what Ed had done in his having the affair, And they didn't. It was a case of writing where you, you're doing this to get from point A to point B. So mm. I, I sort of lost a little steam there knowing. And then I had gripes at the end of saying, OK, I, I can get this character. You've, you've made me do a, a horrible thing without much human justification. You know, no feeling on my part, really. Um, now, the only way I can get out of this to make this character a, a viable character again is to work with Rachel, my daughter. That's mm -hmm. how I prove myself. That's a strong point, as we were saying earlier. That's one of my strong suits. I can make myself a human being if you let me grieve, beg her for forgiveness, have, all, you know, because she hated me at the time all that stuff, and they wouldn't do it. They took her character and they moved her to 
Holly. To Holly. And I remember going and I'm saying, my, why are you doing this? Is the only way I can rehabilitate myself is working with my daughter. And they said, no, Holly needs to be rehabilitated too. I don't even know what was going on in her storyline. So hmm. griping, I felt they sort of hung me out to dry. They lost a superb actress in Ellen. Yeah. And uh, it was a mistake. They immediately said this this was a, a big mistake. And I, I don't know. Well, well you did you did reunite with Rachel eventually though. I mean there yes. was a reconciliation. But but, but the, don't you agree that, that sometimes the writing gets so that they get scared and they say, okay, the the way to deal with this is to take him off, you know, they talk about front burner, back burner, mm -hmm. just take him <laughs> off the stove. Just <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it's interesting, too. I mean, and Courtney and Kate, you must see this all the time. I mean, it's, you know, you're writing something and then the, a new head writer comes in or just somebody, yeah. you know, a new, a new producer, a new exec. You know, it's it, it, there's so many, sadly, cooks in the kitchen when it comes to a soap that we, we you know, sometimes the viewer loses out because of all those cooks and they take. Sure. Yeah. You know, they take that in the direction. You know, I'm just reading a comment from a fan who says, um, Mike says that Ed, Maureen, and Lillian should have given the show a best show Emmy. It was one of the top best acted told stories in Guiding Light history. Bravo to you, Peter, for your brilliant acting. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, you know, it's true. I mean, like, it leads up all of that great storytelling. And then, like you said, you know. Then I think, yeah, I think that, they, you know, that fans were so bereft because oh, because the story didn't work and was played with such depth and humanity that um th then you know they they made their feelings known i don't know you know whether they called they wrote uh, they weren't tweeting. all of the above all they're, they're, they're but, still um, doing it <laughs> courtney <laughs> they're still grieving so, but as Peter says, there then then you have to roll up your sleeves and say, "All right, let's let's go, let's you know, let's 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 play the full Deal act with it. here." But instead, they did. They st they got scared, and they were you know, just like were, we do in real life. I mean, grieving is a process; yeah. it takes time. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, it, it takes time. Um, yeah, it's it, it's 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 crazy that I mean just the power of what you do that, you know, fans are still grieving today. I mean, it kind of, is just mind blowing for mm -hmm. a story. The weakness of, of the mentality of saying, if you give them time, they'll forget about it and maybe <laughs> they'll accept you back. And you want to say, no, you'll come back. They'll see your face and they will immediately go back to the story, to the, the one, no matter if you wait a year or two years, it doesn't, you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But you know, people make mistakes, and that's impressive, isn't it? <laughs> How would you like that? <laughs> mistake and, and coughs out air because he can't come up with a word for it. <laughs> yeah, but one of my favorite scenes, Dad, all time hmm. ever, it was you and Rachel, and you had caught yourself. You had gotten hurt somewhere. I don't know if it was fighting with Roger or whatever it was, hmm. but. And um, Michelle is, you know, bandaging you up in the kitchen. It's, a, I think, the first tender moment the two of you had had since Maureen had died. And, you know, you just, with tears in your eyes, just say, where did you learn how to do this? And she said, well, it's like I always tell everyone, my father's a doctor. And then you just start crying, and then I'm crying. It was, it was amazing. I'm sure I was crying, too. Mom, I'm sure I was crying, too. Mom wrote that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you did? I did. did. Did you write for uh, Peter at Search as well, or just at Guiding no. Light? No, I wasn't writing yet at Search. Okay. She was telling me how to play things. <laughs> she wasn't <laughs> oh, and doing things like um, visiting him in in prison, um, and you know, as his attorney, and um, and getting up in a very dramatic fashion, closing my briefcase. Onto my raincoat, <laughs> so the raincoat was then stuck in my briefcase, and I had to somehow yeah. still look, 
you know, <laughs> in control as I left the jail cell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was doing things like that. But not right. <laughs> Kate, what was it like writing uh, for all my children at the end of the series? Oh God, it was it was heartbreaking. I mean, I was only there for four years, but it was my first job, and I that team, that writing team, was really like a family. And the studio was in New York, and we were in New York, and we would, you know, meet there for writers' meetings, and you got to see the actors a lot, and just go on set. It just felt like a real collaborative experience and I was treated really well. And um, I just, I'll never forget where I was when I got the phone call that it was going off the air and I just started bawling. And and then, so, you know, I quickly scramble and I'm like, I, I need to keep working. I want to keep working. And I contacted um, Bob Guza and I said, I will write what did I say, mom? Like, you know, an eighth of a script, you know, you could do halves or, you know, I was like, I will write like a one hundredth of a script just, you know, <laughs> and, um, and he was so great. And he said, okay, start watching every day. And, and he got me a trial. And so I was already, you know, I had the wonderful, okay, like it's going to be okay. I'm going to go somewhere else. But then the whole prospect park thing happened at all my children. Mm. And, they were being bought and the show was going to go on. And I remember our farewell dinner and I'm just like hysterical saying goodbye to our producer, just being like, I feel like I'm jumping ship. You guys are all still going to go do this and I'm not, not going to be a part of it. And she was wonderful and said, you did the exact right thing. You had no idea this was going to happen and good for you for getting a job and they're lucky to have you. And then, you know, heartbreakingly that didn't work out. So I was extra glad I had gone the route that I did, but, um, no, I loved it there, and I really I enjoyed every minute. Who was that? Have you? Who was that producer? What? Who oh, was, who was that? that producer? Julie Carruthers. Uh -huh. Have you been at General Hospital ever since? Yes, with a one year break, I hopped over to uh, Young and the Restless for because um, Chuck Pratt was over there and who I'd worked with at All My Children, and he um, he gave me a really nice opportunity to go over there, but then when, when he was fired, the first thing that happened when the new head writer mm -hmm. came on was to get rid of anybody who had been hired by him. So, and then mm -hmm. GH was lovely and gracious and amazing and took me back, no questions asked, even though I had, you know, left them. So I've, I've been very lucky, yeah. That's awesome, I mean, you've had a long run there. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I got hooked on GH when my mom was writing for it back in the day. I'd you know rush home from school to see it, so I was a fan long before I ever wrote. So it really felt like a dream come true to well, be there. Well, you've got so many of you know my friends from Guiding Light and As the World Turns on that show. So, yeah, so many, mm -hmm. so many, so many incredibly talented women. And, yeah. and and man, Wes Ramsey, but I don't I don't know if there's any other men from our oh Roger Howarth, of course. Yeah, Roger um, and um Yeah. Uh well kind of yeah. Men, but and, you know, Cynth know. Cynthia, Laura, Emmy, mm -hmm. Moore, Maura. I mean what a Yeah. What a, I know. You know. We've got the really, really strong cast. It's a lot of fun to be able to write for these people. Yeah. Hmm. Courtney, do you have a favorite story? I, first of all, you have written for every show. <laughs> I mean, you, you, um, you, you, you have seven, if I've counted correctly, se seven Emmys, seven WGA Writer Guild Awards, right? You, you were at World Turns as a writer, Guiding Light, Search, then a Barbara, Another World, One Life, and All My Children. Is that? Gosh, and, that and I, general, I couldn't you, do them that fast. Yeah, and General Hospital, yeah. And then and Passions. And, oh, and pa no. Oh no, the other one. What Sunset was the other one? Beach. Sunset, Sunset Beach. Sorry, Sunset Beach. Um, and uh also wrote very briefly for uh Loving. Uh and yeah, very briefly though. Yeah. You that's in that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean the the amount of characters floating in your brain has it must be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, and and yes, and and so it, it things do sort of uh, run together, and you kind of uh, you know forget 
uh, oh no, that story was not there. It was there. But um, it, there, there were places that I felt very much at home and Guiding Light was one and World Turns was another. I never felt fully at home at General Hospital, even though I loved the show. I, I really enjoyed watching it. I, it was, you know, as Kate says, even though it's, there are some different cast members now. I mean, the cast was super strong uh, when I was writing. It been like right at the end of the 90s, I guess. Um, but I, at, at a certain point, I found that I, what, I, I just never felt fully comfortable with the, oh, this is just gonna sound so judgmental <laughs> and I don't mean it to be, but there was like a, you know, the morality that drove the story, you know, involved Sonny Corinthos having control over a ton of people. And Luke also was not, you know, uh, the kind of person who thought a lot about what's right and wrong, but, you know, they just sort of lived by instinct. And I found when I got back to, um, to Oakdale, I sort of felt, uh, oh, okay. I kind of know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And um, there seems to be, you know, the eternal struggle is still in place. And so it, it, it's interesting. I mean, you, 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 you can go from, from town to town uh, writing soap opera, but you don't always feel fully at home. Hmm. Do you have a favorite story? I, I, I want to ask a favorite uh, scene or story that you wrote for Peter and a favorite story you wrote for Oakdale. Okay. Um, well, gosh. Oakdale. I, when Hogan Sheffer was mm -hmm. head writing in Oakdale, I mean, there were so many stories that had a, you know, an element of wildness and unpredictability to them that- Just, uh, just I, like him. Just <laughs> like him, I know, God bless him. Wow, what a fun, fun, and he, and he appreciated me so much. It was really touching. It's like, um, I, I had just started editing. I had been a script writer un until I came to As the World Turns, and that's when I started editing, and it really, I, I felt, it was my milieu. I think I think it's where I did my, my my where I had my best contribution to make. And he was very aware of the role that editing played in the grand scheme. And it's like he actually knew what I did because he read everything and he was on top of everything. And you know, like four dozen roses would arrive at my home from Hogan. It was, uh, you know, he he was that kind of uh, generous soul who made you feel really appreciated. But you were asking me about stories. So um, all that stuff with Julia and Jack that got mm. really crazy and ended up with a, a Julia, you, you think she's kidnapping a baby and it's a butterball turkey wrapped in... <laughs> modeling clothes and it falls down the stairs. I mean, I just, that stuff was really, really fun to write. Um, and Maura and Michael and Annie, I mean, oh talented. God, you know, just a cast from, you know, out of a dream. Yeah. And the, my favorite writing for Peter had to do with this uh, thing we were just discussing where I got to write that reconciliation scene theme for, for I was really worried about it and I it, it you know how people say oh I I went to sleep and I had a dream and then I woke up and I wrote you know the odyssey but uh this was sort of like that where I just I still didn't know what I was going to do but then in the middle of the night it came to me the my father's a doctor angle and I was like I think I know how to attack this. Peter, was it nervous to have to 
act your wife's uh, words at times? <laughs> um, not, not with, not with stuff like that. I mean, I think most actors would say if you get something that's super emotional, you're not worried about the, the words and things. Uh, so no. And Courtney was always like in my mind, half, half writer, half actor. Mm -hmm. So we could, we could talk about stuff like mm -hmm. that. Oh, it was, it was a real gift to be able to write for someone whose voice is so fully in your head, you know, yeah. although, I mean, that's the, that's the gift of writing soap operas that you get to see people again and again and again and again and get to know their voice in a way that you, you don't always, um, I mean, this is years and watching people grow up and. Well, that's why we have so many fans tuning in today. I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we, no, I mean, you're in their living room, you're writing for them. Yeah. But know, it, the, the, it is something when, when a writer tries to break the mold a little bit of, uh, you know, the way the, uh, the audience and, a, and an actor sees a certain character. My, my favorite instance of that was the wonderful, I mean, much beloved actor, Bill Rorick. And mm -hmm. he was, he was playing, you know, this stuffy bow tie kind of very proper, very smart. And I, I don't know what the rest of the scene was, but he had some argument with somebody. And Courtney had written the line as the tag at the end of it. Right. This buds for you. Like that was the big commercial then for Budweiser. This buds for you. So I was in, I was in the rehearsal hall. And Rorick was was doing. I well, what, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say this. This I would. I would never say this. This is ridiculous. And the director, who sort of knew that it would work, I think it was, well, Bruce. Not, Bruce mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, "Just try it. Just try it." So Rorick gets up on the floor the first time we did it. Then mm -hmm. all the the crew and everything there, and he said, sort of half heartedly, "This buds for you," and the whole crew cracked up <laughs> and you could see Rourke, his eyes, he could get little squinty eyes like this. He sort of looked around and said, oh, okay, all right, uh, this, this line will work and <laughs> threw himself into it. But it was because, you know, sometimes you can get trapped in thinking and hearing a voice too much and that, mm -hmm. that the actor owns the part and then it gets really sort of boring. You know, you've got to have the co-ownership between the actor and a writer who wants to write it and shake things up a bit. That's, I think that's what the, the audience really likes to see. And having a great actor like yourself and Bill Rourke playing those characters helps a lot. <laughs> helps a lot. I don't put myself in Bill Rourke's category. <laughs> um, did you realize, um, the impact of the Bauer family, like when you joined, did you did you tune in to see the Bowers? Did you know you were becoming part of this historic family on Guiding Light? Um, uh, no, because let, let's, I mean, pretty truthfully, except for little minor flare-ups, the Bowers had been, they were in the process of being sort of sidelined. Mm -hmm. We were we were no we were sort of around because we were it was a familiar name and Charita was still there when I joined the show so she was this is Charita Bauer who was a talk about a brilliant. wonderful <laughs> brilliant actress who could make anything work but no I I in fact it, it, an honest answer would be I I sort of hated I cursed the historic part of it because mm -hmm. it meant that you never really got anything no, or not that much I shouldn't say anything but you didn't get that much to do we always we always felt that we were clawing for for but isn't that the fault of of uh, not Courtney but like the writers not seeing that because to, no, you know to, to the fans the Bowers are very important. The fault that if a character, a family line has been around so long, any new head writer coming in or any new producer wants to say, I can, I can, I can spruce this show up and I want to bring in new, new characters, a new take. And 
the people like the Bowers, that we, we were sort of cursed with being old fashioned, old time. And mm -hmm. you had to have very special writers who wanted to write like a, a dear friend of ours, Richard Cullen, another superb, Richard and Carolyn, superb writers always said, you know, it's much, much harder to write for the good guys than it is mm -hmm. for the, the sexy villains and stuff like that, because you really got to, it's, it's a, a smaller, smaller brush. So no, I was not. I was not crazy. In fact, to go back to what I started the show, I'm saying, you know, they they didn't tell me what role I was going to play. I had I was coming from playing a ludicrous role <laughs> on World Turns of a uh, conductor who conducted two full orchestras in the Hollywood Bowl. This was <laughs> small camera. But, you know, I, it was a sexy, absurd. Character, so I thought, okay, so World Turns wants me to come on. They're not telling me what it is, and who did I think no, it Guiding was? Light wanted you. Guiding yeah. Light Light wants me to come on, and who did I think it was? It was going to be, oh, you thought Alan it? maybe. Oh, Alan know. or not? Couldn't have been Roger because Zaz hadn't come back yet. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like another character who was maybe leaving, and they were going to replace me with a a fun villain which i really looked forward to playing and and so i was a little bummed by showing <laughs> on that play, makes sense you know ed, ed bauer but uh did that was i complaining too much <laughs> no that, that, that's I, honest i that's swore honest. i was not going to come on and take no, out but that that makes rage. it makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense peter and and you know it, it's just interesting because of you know, fans do love the Bowers, and it's just like you said, though, you have to find the right writer who knows that family who could write them in a certain it's way. Hard. It's hard to do that kind of stuff, you know. But I do have to ask about uh, you mentioned Sharita, if you can share, and what was it like having a character like Mikey O'Leary as your son? <laughs> <laughs> but go to Sharita first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can, can I ask Courtney to tell a story? Can you tell the the the, the meeting where she's the the little kid has been? Oh, do you gosh. know how to do that? I'm you know uh, it, it, this is a story that a friend of mine tells so well. But I think <laughs> okay, so uh, Frederick, who Bauer. Rick, yeah. I guess. Yeah, Frederick Bauer. Yeah, I think no. Uh, either him or some other child on the show died. Then everyone, everyone hated the kid, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? No, yeah come on. This is terrible. Right. No, no. <laughs> come on. Crash some reputations. No, what else can we do? No, but uh, seriously, I don't. I ha I don't remember that right. part of the story. So uh, uh, an unpopular child actor <laughs> was supposed to be killed, <laughs> and so the cast was sort of relieves but also you mm -hmm. know because a child was losing a job and mm -hmm. he's a child everyone's saying oh that's too bad and so they had a big a big cast meeting and the producer or somebody said and the good news is timmy is not going to be killed we're keeping him on the show and sharita supposedly <laughs> turned and muttered to some someone who was sitting next to her he will be dead in our hearts forever <laughs> <laughs> Chavita was just, oh, he was marvelous in every single way and a brilliant, brilliant actor. You could give her anything to do and she would make it. She had this firm like New England backbone oh, of, yeah. She, and and I, I've always loved her because when I came on replacing Mark, he was her, what relation were they? Was that, that's her Mother son? and son, I yeah. Don't, I, I don't confuse the mother <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> so she had the most to complain about when I showed up replacing Mark because Mark was her son. And the cast was a little, I, I came on and I, you know, there were remarks about, oh, he's younger than Mark or something like mm -hmm. that because they felt threatened like they were going to do a whole youth movement. Mm -hmm. Charita was really, really wonderful to me then. She was super nice and just welcoming, saying this is this is showbiz and welcome to the show mm -hmm. you, you can't find anything wrong with Charita. no you can, you can look forever and, mm -hmm. and you can't find anything mm -hmm. wrong hmm. mikey I, I would, 
Mikey. I would, have lo- I would have loved to have met Sharita myself. She oh, would have. You would have. I would have loved. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. And Mikey just kept you on your toes. I mean, he's that <laughs> kind of person. You you never know what uh, what kind of what kind of show you're going to get from him, but it's always going to be something interesting. So he was is a ton mm-hmm. of fun. Mm-hmm. A ton of fun. He <laughs> is a ton of fun. Yes, practical oh, yes. joker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the biggest, the biggest. Uh, Kate, do you have a favorite story that you have told at uh, General Hospital over the years? Hmm, favorite story that we've told. God, you know, it's funny when people ask about a favorite show that I've ever written, like a just episode, it's not, it's actually not going to be it. General Hospital, even though I've written a ton of stuff there that I adored, but we did a show at All My Children that was like, you just followed the character Greenlee, Rebecca Buttig, from start mm. to finish the whole day. And I'd never written for just one person. Like it was completely from her POV and nobody else even had any lines. And it was really, really interesting. And she just, can you imagine like, memorizing all of those lines for an entire hour of television and she was just brilliant in it and it was really it could have not come off wonderfully but it did and it was so one of those shows where you couldn't wait to watch it and when you did you were not disappointed in the slightest and that was so much fun what was it um centered around (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something about it was like her wedding day she was marrying um david hayward you know and he's evil and she was doing it you know, for some reason being forced into it and it was her pov going into that day and of course i'm sure something very dramatic happened and i'm not going to remember what it is but <laughs> i'm terrible like that you talk about writing i've been written for nearly as many shows as my mother and i still it all gets all jumbled up together but it was just a really fun concept and she's talked about it too she really liked doing it as well so that was always fun to hear that's awesome i'm glad you just mentioned your mom again currently do you have like a library of things you've written from the shows have you saved things for a particular reason? Well, I saved the first script that I ever wrote that got on the air on the doctors. Oh, um, wow. I, what I, year? I still have like a, a paper copy of it. 1981 or not 1980, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, I, and I saved some scripts uh, from Santa Barbara. Which yeah, I, I'm so I didn't get to talk about that yet today, but I I mean that show was that that was in Hogan Sheffer territory mm. that show of like being oh, wow. so fun and freewheeling and also uh, the Dobsons were that kind of head writer too who were always making you feel so appreciated and so yes I I I put both of those experiences in a very similar category. Do you still watch any soap? No, I, 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 I don't. And I just don't watch television in the daytime anymore uh, now that I'm not being paid to. <laughs> but whenever, <laughs> whenever I do, I'm usually like, if, if I tune in to see GH, if Kate's written something, um, I, I'm, I'm always so proud to have been associated with the form. And I just feel like they continue to break barriers and expand and adapt. And, you know, any show that is that is on the air now with all of the things working against it, I, I mean, my hat is off to them. Yeah. That's interesting. So when you are working and Kate, you're writing for General Hospital, do you watch every day? You know, I, are you... I try to. Um, It's, you know, sometimes you just kind of run out of hours in the day. But like we were talking about before, I find it so helpful, especially in daytime. I feel like there's just new characters coming in all the time. And if you're not watching, you don't know how to write them or if somebody has been recast. um, You know, like when Nina was recast and now we have the wonderful Cynthia, right? That's her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, you know, yeah. I, I knew I knew her from Guiding Light, but I didn't know how she was going to play this character. So I couldn't wait to tune in and see how, you know, at the beginning, you just keep writing the character the way that it was played previously. And then you tweak it as you see how, how what they're doing and their nuances and their rhythm. And so I, I think it's really important to watch for that reason. But, you know, embarrassingly, I'll get like 20 shows behind and then I'll be sick and in bed for a week and catch up on it all or something. But. Yeah, but there, like the, the time lag between when what Kate is writing and what goes on the air, what is aired, works against that. There's such yeah. a long, such an enormous difference that stuff has been committed to on paper and then it gets committed to again much, much later on air. And it's hard to get that wonderful working back and forth yeah. between actor and writer when you've got sometimes several months in between when yeah. something's written to when it's done, you know? Wow, yeah, and Courtney, did you watch the same, for the same reasons? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have it to. It, it helps. Oh, very mm -hmm. much so, yeah. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, Peter, I, I mean, this has been fantastic. I know the fans have loved it. Well, one thing, the, they, um, the fans told me Freddie Bauer was played by Gary Hanek, and they considered killing him off in 1974 or 75. <laughs> <laughs> but, I tell you, I really, I mean, uh, these people have such a wealth of knowledge. It's oh my God, I wish I had a story to retell. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, are you kidding? I mean, one of the fans sent me pictures of the two of you from Search that I used to help promote this show. Like, I, I couldn't find them on, I couldn't find them online, and they. They have, yeah, I mean, it, it's really incredible what they've held on to, the memories and, and their wealth of knowledge. But I know fans uh, would love to hear Peter, uh, Maureen Garrett and Zaslo and being a part of that story. What was that like for you? Well, th there again, unfortunately, that was basically Mart Holswick who did that. The uh -huh. Right, but you were still involved later, right? Uh. Was I not really? I mean, I, I always had a, a, an antagonism with with uh, Roger. With Roger, yeah. And was always, you know, Maureen and I worked together, had a wonderful time, and I, you know, sometimes in love with her, sometimes not, whatever. But it was not the great triangle that that it was, was back then. That it was going before, and th that's something you know. At the, at the very end, when they were playing uh, "Guiding Light Up." they asked some of us to go on um, 60 minutes and for an interview when I went on, I, was I with Mikey at that point or was I, I, I probably asked you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to make a point of saying, mentioning all the people because Mark wasn't even the first to play Ed Bauer. There, there was right. um, Bob Gentry. Bob Gentry. So during the interview, I got to say I was one of the people playing Ed Bauer, and I mentioned all of the people thinking this is what soaps are, a continuity of a company, a lot of people all pitching in, not just one person. And I got so furious that I can't remember which of the interviewers it was. Then there was a time like 10 minutes later, he said, and, and yes, going back to what you said, Peter, how ridiculous it is to have all these characters. I mean, this one character played by so many actors. So it was completely misunderstood. But I do think that is one of the strengths of soaps of this. Correct. And that that's the... Um, the um stupidity of people who don't know what a soap opera really is and the mm -hmm. continuity that it provides. But but it's true. I mean, you know, people just like Ellen Dolan and Ellen Parker were two parts. Rachel Mine, mm -hmm. Roy Lenz, you know, Grant, uh, you know, Beverly McKenzie and Marge Doucet. Oh. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, two, two. <laughs> oh, what beautiful. Did, did Beverly just make you smile there? <laughs> Peter? Uh, both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Wow. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful women. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, truly. I mean, but it, but it's so interesting too. And that's like to you know, I'll talk tomorrow with the casting directors. But you yeah. know, to find people that you know 
us, the viewers, fall in love with each one for mm -hmm. whatever the different reasons is a testament to those casting directors. Oh, it's different. Different. oh gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you yeah, look at General Hospital, there's three Carly's that I've absolutely adored. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and, yeah. and Laura's been playing it for like 15 years now, right? It's been a while now, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's like 15 years. I, I thought Tamara Braun was great too. And I'm going to, Sarah Brown was wonderful too. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Laura Wright? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and she mm -hmm. was so wonderful on our show. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know, she's oh. really incredible, yeah. Yeah, she, she's so great. Well, I thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank thank you for having us. It's so much yes. fun. <laughs> I, you, you got to see your daughter who's not, yeah. who's not with you <laughs> in two different cities. Yeah. Well, everybody yeah. stay safe. You and, too. Uh, yeah, Alan. Thank, thank, well, thank you so you much. For, for all of these wonderful shows that you yes. have done. It's yes. just, uh, it's such a, a, a beautiful gift to the industry to have these reunions, not just for the fans who are seeing people that they miss seeing on screen, but for the actors who haven't seen each other in a long time also. It's, it's just been great. And we should thank it, It's funny because that's, you know, I, I really, I started doing it for the fans. I didn't think of it, but it, I like hearing that. So I appreciate that because it, you know, even, even, um, you know, the woman who hired me was a consultant for P and G and hired me for my job. But I just reconnected her with her former One Life to Live. Do you know Rody Ro Rosenzweig? Oh, I know the name, but I don't. Rody, Rody was the head of PR at ABC, uh, and I reconnected her with you know some actors from from that show. And it, it's just nice seeing. But I think everybody right now is looking for that connection too. Uh, all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. All of us, yeah. All of us, and you know, yeah. our fans really still miss World Terms. And I am going to do. I I don't have a date, and I'm not going to say with who. I I'll tell you guys later. But uh, a search, another search reunion. Oh, with good, them. good. Yeah, with some actors who uh, I was able to get in touch with. I know people were asking. So, so thank you very much. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Don't forget tomorrow we have Rob Decina and Mary Clay Bolin, the casting directors. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.